but uh, everyone said that's that's a great idea. If you pull this off, it's going to be amazing, yeah. but not with my money. <laughs> <laughs> and we probably heard that about 200 times, honestly, 200 times. Hello and welcome to the UK Surf Show. We are your hosts. I'm Pete. And I'm Leighton. On this episode, which is a bonus episode, we took a trip to the Wave in Bristol. Yeah, but before we do that, something really cool has happened. It has. Something really cool has happened. A, a bit of a, a kind of bonus for a our A bonus listeners. for you so guys bon- out there. Yeah, yeah, a bonus for our listeners on a bonus episode. Yeah. It's quite cool. So um, our friends over at North Core have offered the listeners to this show a 15% discount on anything you buy. So if you go over there and use the promo code SURFSHOW15, you'll get 15% off anything. And that is www.northcore-europe.com. That's really cool because they're doing some really nice stuff now. The balance boards I've seen that they've brought out now. Um, obviously, the seat covers. Uh, I got you, them. Yeah, you got them. Yeah, and they're, they're great, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, what a great thing for our listeners to to have. So, as, as a thank you to to our listeners, you are going to get this code. A thank you for North Core just for all the support. They've supported the, the competition we did. Yeah. Um, and now, and now with this, for our listeners, it's just great. So hopefully, leading up to Christmas, when, you know, surfers are going to... You want to get your stuff. Yeah, get get some uh, new prezzies. Yeah. You so get a little bit of money off now, yeah. which is good. Surf I'm show all up for fif- money off. <laughs> You're well up for money off. So yeah, just go and use Surf Show 15 and you will get money off at North Core. Yes. So back to this episode, we went to the Wave in Bristol to watch the Adaptive Surfing competition yes hosted by surf in england yep and sponsored by dry rope yeah and and s- there was uh, some lager i don't know i don't drink it's so. a cornish lager yeah. company don't drink so don't no, know no <laughs> but um it's it's all on it's all on like surf in england's uh feed on um Instagram. Instagram, yeah, yeah. And, and the Waves feed and yeah. and probably Dry Waves feed as well, actually. Yeah, we got to speak to some really nice people. We spoke to uh, Nick... Nick Hainsfield, yeah, the, the main guy, the, so the he's, founder of yeah. the Wave. He's uh, Wave Maker Nick on Instagram. Yep, and we also spoke to Martin, who is... The One Limb Surfer, and... Uh, yeah, that's just an incredible, like, listening yeah. to his story and listening to him speak is an absolutely incredible tale. Well, I was thinking about the both of the interviews we have. Like, we spoke to a few people there, um, but we only recorded two interviews. Um, and when we did our The Wave episode, and I gave The Wave, uh, well, I'll give it, like, seven, I think, out of ten, and you said, like, seven and a half, and we bumped up to eight. Well, I now would bump up a whole kind of point just because of the story that Nick explains about how he started it. Like, the whole thing is built on kind of like an emotion on emotion, and also to, to genuinely help people. Um, so after meeting him, like, the whole place just seemed that bit better to me. Yeah, yeah. So we'll drop in this first interview we've got with Nick. Here we go. Yeah, so we are here at the Wave. Yeah. At the first adaptive surf competition on a um, artificial wave. Is that right? Uh, the first one in England, definitely. Uh, they have had one uh, in Wales, uh, yep. but this is the first uh, English adaptive championships that we're holding in a wave pool, yeah. which is so amazing. It's, you know, this place to, pardon the pun, has made a splash in the uh, surfing world anyway, hasn't sure. it, the wave? And so with this as well, it's yeah. just like all within the first year, you know, you must yeah. be really happy. Like, I'm, yeah, I'm unbelievably proud of what, what we've managed to do, you know, particularly in the environment that we're living in at the moment to still be able to host this, uh, this competition. Uh, I mean, it's been a lifelong dream 
of me, well, mainly in the last 10 years uh, when we set out to build the wave um, and I got very heavily uh, involved in the adaptive community. I went to San Diego to the World Games with the English team. Well, it was the GB team back then uh, and then the English team uh, and was just blown away with the amazing competitive edge that uh, all these uh, guys and girls have um, but also amazing humility, amazing stories that came out from all the characters because they'd all completely, um, yeah, just completely had to overcome massive problems uh, physically, mentally, um, to be, and, and then to be able to collect all these people and have a proper competition. I just then said, right, if we're going to build the wave we absolutely have to host these kind of competitions and actually it becomes then a great um a great talking point about amazing characters but also the yeah the struggles that people have to overcome in life and and actually for a lot of these people who who there's a bit of a barrier for for surfers sometimes going oh i don't like getting cold don't like getting wet uh i, I can't stand up i can't do this i can't there's always excuses but suddenly you have to fire the excuses because there are people here who've overcome way, way bigger challenges. And Absolutely. I think it's a great yeah. way of, of, of saying that everybody can do this. We've, we've mentioned in previous podcasts, um, you've got to have some bravery to go out there with, with a, like a, a disability yep. of any, any degree. Yep. And some guys, uh, are, I just well, can't like even. Martin, haven't you? Who's yeah, the, Martin, uh, yeah, the one Martin, yeah, yeah, amazing. Surfer. Yeah, 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 just... We're, uh, just, and I can't even comprehend how brave you have to be to do that. Yeah, we've said if you imagine paddling out into the surf with one arm tied behind your back and your yep. legs tied together, it has just been the most terrifying thing ever. So. Absolutely. In fact, last year we, uh, before we had the uh, one in, in Newquay, we did a workshop and to try and help coaches uh, from around the UK try to understand what it is to be able to. Um, be an adaptive surfer so we did things like uh, put goggles on uh with with exactly the same disability with with uh as melissa reed uh, and i surfed with um with the goggles with melissa and um it was absolutely terrifying it really was <laughs> I and i was. got like really nasty sort of vertigo um and so disorientated and i couldn't catch a single wave <laughs> and i'm i'm an okay surfer um and it yeah really highlighted what how amazing it is to overcome those kind of disabilities i suppose with with vision um impaired as well you we've talked before you how much you use your eyes as reference yeah. points and you just I, I we talked in a in the last podcast we went out i went out night surfing with yep. a guy and all of a sudden, I think I'm paddling out and I'm going sideways because yep. I've got no point of reference. Exactly. And, like all these tiny little things that you just think how people overcome them, how, how, how they get that. Yeah. Well, just as, that courage. Add surfers, how, add surfers you, you kind of use all of your senses to yep. be able to do it yep. in a competent way. So yep. to have even one of those just affected slightly makes yep. such a massive difference. So yeah. Nothing but. Yeah. Of admiration yeah, for no, people they're amazing, yeah. amazing people. Yeah, I, I, I love the fact you're doing things like this. I know you guys are getting involved with other charities yep. as well. Um, and I think, like, in the surfing community, that makes such a massive impact mm -hmm. because all surfers are the kind of that way inclined. I think you know, mm -hmm. that nobody's selfish as a surfer, Every, mm -hmm. everybody is like we've said before, it's like a tribe. Yeah, so what you're doing, I think, is just phenomenal, and uh, it's only going to be. Like a total success it's for this place. It's just the start. It literally is just the start. So oh, it's, it's great. So <laughs> amazing to hear. Like we're we're really pleased we only live half an hour away from yeah, this amazing. place. Amazing. So. <laughs> so how did how did the idea and what brought you to the idea originally to come up with this place? Like, um, so I mean, I've, I've I've been a lifelong surfer, maybe nearly forty years, um, and so you're yes. not old enough to forty years. Yeah, I know. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> He wants something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and, um, and 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 my background is in healthcare. So I've been an osteopath for uh, well, I was an osteopath for about eighteen, nineteen years. So um, and I was getting quite frustrated about how how I was only being able to create an impact for people's health, just one patient at a time, really. Yeah. And normally the people that I was seeing were white middle class people who could afford it and I uh, did a bit of NHS work 
and I was going, and I started to get really frustrated that I wasn't really making an impact in people's health and well-being mm. um, the way that I thought I could. It also um, coincided with uh, my dad dying um, pretty tragically, and that was just a bit of a wake. That was like a sliding doors moment for me. Just go, actually, uh, I really, really realised, you know, understood my mortality and how I'm not potentially going to be leaving some kind of a legacy yeah um so it started to become a little bit of a legacy for my dad for me for my kids uh and then we so i started to look at all right how could i create a health and well-being destination uh in bristol get people outdoors into nature in a water environment was looking around sort of lakes swimming stuff like that and then serendipity made it happen that uh, I just looked at a YouTube clip one day of the first release of Waveguard technology, just a muddy little pool in San Sebastian where waves r- ran down the lake and then suddenly surfing, su- somebody surfing here. I was like, oh my goodness, it's like, that is, that's the centerpiece for that vision. Uh, and then uh, wind forward 10 years and it's kind of built, but, but it has been an absolute roller coaster. I, to I get love there. that. The, the way that it's kind of formed is from a really natural place yeah and that's probably why it's such a success actually because it, it kind of it is built like for surfers with by a surfer and that's yeah. what all surfers want and yeah I the agree. location as well yeah. um it's just kind of perfect I, yeah. and it's made such a massive impact i listen to a lot of podcasts mm-hmm. and particularly surfing podcasts and they're talking about the way they're talking about Bristol mm-hmm. in South America, you yeah. know, and isn't that amazing? Yeah. You know, yeah. all of a sudden, Bristol is a surf location, yeah, and it's made such a massive impact, yeah. Um, so yeah, nothing but congratulations on this place, it's just incredible. Thank you. What's been the, what's been the hardest part of it? What's been the hardest part of getting it to this stage, um, or to the opening stage? What was the hardest part? The opening of stage, um. Crikey, there's so many, so many, <laughs> so many <laughs> hurdles. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess the hardest part was, you know, without a doubt, was raising the investment to be able to get get to this point. Uh, I mean, people have faith in that straight away, or was that something? No, you really uh, had to well, I would say that every. I don't think there was a single person who said, "Well, I'm, they probably didn't say it to myself," but that, um, <laughs> but that didn't say uh, it's an amazing idea. Yeah. I think, yeah, definitely, I would have been called crazy a number of times. Um, but uh, everyone said that's that's a great idea. If you pull this off, it's going to be amazing. Yeah. <laughs> but not with my money. Um, <laughs> and we probably heard that about two hundred times, that's honestly, two hundred times. And, and those people going. are now going, yeah. "Oh, I wish I put my money in." Yeah. yeah well, yeah, exactly. Um, and you know, we did. We, you know, luckily we got we got amazing investors then behind us. Uh, and actually, that that worked out because we we flew we flew. Um, uh, the investors out to San Sebastian and he never ever surfed before and we got him in the water and by the end of an hour and a half maybe two hours he was surfing 1.9 meter waves oh, uh, and he just said right we have to do this we have to do this I think um, everyone yeah. should surf at least once or try it it's just it's just you can't no one can describe that feeling you yeah. get from surfing and yeah. we ask that question a lot what do you feel like surfing and everyone goes it's just like ah oh. Yeah, well, what a great sales pitch that was. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, it was perfect. It, well, it was perfect. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, I started this whole thing with 500 quid. You know, obviously it costs a lot more than that. Um, <laughs> and yeah, we had to also, you know, bring hearts and minds along with us as well. Yeah. So, um, you know, there, it was absolutely a, a financial investment but also i think the way we set it up and wanting to be a triple bottom line business so m- making sure that we're making social impact on the way also being environmentally responsible i think it really created a very compelling picture for for a future facing business and that's yeah yeah um, Are you, like the design of the whole place you can tell it's got that kind of eco feel to it mm. um, so i'm we're, we're both in the building trade mm-hmm. and looking around at the building it's all made with sustainable timbers yep. and things yep. like that and that just kind of makes it melt yep. into the background and yep. you're not in the middle of bristol so yep. it's not like we're in a city yeah exactly there, and so it's just green everywhere and yep. it's just such a perfect location yeah and like bristol actually is is probably the perfect place because you've got all the surfers from the southwest mm-hmm. that will come up and try mm-hmm. it all the surfers from wales and it's all within two hours of yep. all those people and that yep. is 
the majority of the surfing community in the yeah, UK. Yeah, exactly. So it is, yeah, it's perfect. So. And again, that's serend- I mean, I live here. I live 15 minutes away from here and I wanted to do it here because I, so I could use it. It's very <laughs> selfish. But actually, the reason why I've moved to Bristol is because I want to be... I uh, needed to have a, uh, a job that, that, you know, could feed the family and all the rest of it, but also wanted to have access to the beaches of South West and, uh, uh, and Wales. So, so by virtue, it is the perfect yeah. uh, place for yeah. me and therefore the catchment yeah, area yeah. of people that we, we want to bring here. So. We, we were chatting and we were wondering, we were t- like when we were saying, well, what would you do if you had it? We were wondering if when everybody's gone and the lights are off and you've locked the door, do you get the remote control for the wave and go on out and um, have a surf by yourself? I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not allowed to uh, turn it on in the evenings and stuff like that. Um, but, uh, yeah, we, we, you know, we've been quite lucky. We had a little bit of a period uh, after, after lockdown was lifted, but before we were able to open properly. Yeah. So there was about a week or two where we just had the waves uh, and the team here and, and onboarding team. And I, that suppose, was great. I suppose that's good training as well and to get yeah. everybody. It's good bonding, isn't it? Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. Um, so I've surfed it myself and I, I found it really hard. It took me about three or four days after I left. And I was like, I liked it, but I don't know what it was. And I had to separate the fact that it's not the ocean. Yeah. And I found that really difficult. Yeah. And ha- do you find do you find a lot of people get that when they come really? here, or it's yep. it, it's kind of I don't, it's really hard yeah, to it's, explain. It's, it's not a negative thing. No, it's, it's just no. different. Isn't yeah, it? it's just it's the same, but it's different. Yeah, I would say um, I you know I spend a lot of time in the water, uh, um, just watching um, people, watching customers. I think the the massive difference that a lot of people don't realise is that this is a proper reef break. So these these are waves that we don't really get much you know, yeah. often in in uh, in the UK, and certainly not on you know on uh, sort of mass level. You'd you'd be having to go to sort of secret spots to kind of find these yeah. kind of waves. Um, you know this 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 is like a, a classic Californian beach break, uh, uh, reef break, yeah. uh, point break, like Malibu and and. Oceanside and, and various other places, um, and I think people 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 have probably learned to surf at the beach and yeah. the way that the, the beach break works, and they're going, oh yeah, I'm kind of like an intermediate, almost advanced, so I'm going to put myself in there, and then they come here and probably never surfed a reef break in their life, yeah, mm. and it it's it's yeah, just it's different. very different, it's a vi- yeah. yeah, very different way to yeah, yeah it breaks along a very specific line. And yeah, it's a very to, sweet spot. Yeah, like, you yeah. have to line up on that spot, otherwise yeah. you're going over the falls or just missing the wave. Yeah, and so. it, it kind of jacks up quite quickly, yep. doesn't it? Yeah. yeah, yeah, it gets steep very quick. Yep. Yeah, yeah, um, it's definitely we, definitely we, something where we've we've both surfed and said, you know, you could see two or three times here and then you'd, you'd get that all dialed in and you'd be like, oh, this, oh, totally. is, this yeah. is amazing. Yeah. And actually, since we've been and since we have, um, because we did, we did a, a podcast on, mm-hmm. on the wave, um, you've added another setting, haven't you? Yeah, we've also, yeah, we've got um, a new Malibu setting that we've got. So at the moment we... We've got the main waves that break out on the reef, which mm-hmm. is like a proper reef break. And then we've got the, uh, the bay waves, which is where all the sort of beginner surfers uh, um, uh, uh, are being, yeah, having their lessons delivered. Yep. And we've got an area, another area in, in the lake, which, which makes um, a, a perfect wave really for, for stepping up from beginner experience, but not quite ready for the reef. Um, so what it happens is that it's like a, a, a green wave, so an unbroken wave, which has got a little bit of foam at the top. Mm-hmm. So it, it gives you a, a nice gentle slide into the wave, yep. and then it does still peel. Um, and it's really fun, so, and it's very accessible for all. So um, you know, if you're a decent surfer, you can just go out on a big log or something like that yep. and have a really super cruisy time. But also somebody, that, that's a good step up from a beginner. Yeah. Um, and that was the bit that we really were missing um, uh, for a while where, where there was people, customers who were slightly in between worlds and there wasn't quite a wave there for them yet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we actually mentioned, I, yeah, that, yeah, we mentioned we? that. Because cause we went on the intermediate wave mm-hmm. uh, and when we said, you know, that is, it was actually because it's quite steep, the yep. intermediate wave. Yep. Uh, and so if you're, you're a beginner mm-hmm. and you're 
on the white water with your helmet on in here and stuff yep. and then to go straight back out to that we yep. were saying well, that's actually quite daunting that's quite, so, yeah, it's yeah, quite a step there up was, there was a girl out there when I was out there and she was like I've just come from the beginning wave and it was like she wasn't ready to be yep. there so that's that's yep. brilliant that that's yep. it's good there. that you're listening to it's not like it's uh, this is what we do come and pay have a go you're, mm-hmm. you're still listening to the, the customers and surf community yeah. and adapting to that it's great that the wave garden technology can actually do that as oh, well. We can, we can, we've got thousands of sets. Well, there's about a thousand settings that we could, we could put out there. And it's more around, we need to put something out there that's actually quite easy to describe or is cl- not easy, but, but yeah. keep it quite, quite tight and mm-hmm. really understand the wave ourselves, but more importantly, understand how customers uh, use the wave um, because th- we've had real issues and a- actually all the other wave gardens who've opened have the s- same problem is uh, generally speaking uh, w- women over egg how good they are mm-hmm. and normally men over egg it um, yes, yeah. and so you're oh, I'm definitely definitely going to do the advanced yeah. wave and well, you're just going oh yeah no. we had that <laughs> we went we went on the intermediate I thought we could go up a step yep. so um but the question you must have been asked a lot: How big can it go? Yeah. Have you got? Have you got like a Mavericks set? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, well, I guess it, it's more. It's it's actually not so much around wave height. It's actually how properly gnarly the wave gets. Yeah. So there are some settings out there where some of people like Ben Skinner and um, uh, Ruben Ash and people like that. We, we tried them with them, and they were like, actually, that that's actually. Sc- slightly terrifying <laughs> oh, really? <because> wow. <laughs> just mainly because um because uh if you know much are around sort of barreling waves you, the the sweet spot is you've got like a really good barreling wave and you normally just behind the barrel you've got a foam ball the foam ball is is where you get the drive and and uh and sort of spits you out uh you know from from a barrel now some of the waves that we can push here they they sort of flare up quite high so um uh, they get up to sort of 2.2, 2.3 um, meters high, but the the foam ball um, actually catches up with the surfer and almost like gra- it's like it's like uh, a lion like grabbing you <laughs> from from within, um, and it's it's really tricky. And it was amazing seeing people just like like literally Some felt like best, somebody was yeah. just just a beast was grabbing them, um, and they said like you know. But why? Why would you do that? They 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 actually weren't the cleanest barrels. It was just it was just a bit too much, too intense. Yeah, um, and that's kind of nicer when you hear pro surfers saying, "Oh, that's actually that's kind of gnarly." Because you <laughs> you just imagine that they've surfed huge waves around the world and they yeah. come in and go, "Yeah, no problem." And yeah. actually, like, whoa, that's um, yeah, that's kind of scary. Yeah. So. so I think it's not so much the wave height, um, but mainly around the intensity of the experience. Yeah, yeah. Um, there must be a lot of power in that. Yeah, wave there's and, a lot. Yeah. yeah, and and actually, then if you know if you do wipe out uh, on those really big settings, you know, you, yeah, you, you're. F- falling in pretty shallow water yeah. and it's pretty gnarly i did um, notice that actually just just on the intermediate wave like you come off and mm-hmm. like in the uk so it's a bre- beach break and normally you're quite far right you come off and yeah you're nowhere near the bottom you come off and you can like stand up you're like yeah. oh my god yeah in, like, in yeah just just sort of um shin deep water yeah and, and actually the the reality is that the, the bigger the waves get here mm. uh they're actually get safer because you're you're falling in deeper water right. uh um, you know there's easy escape into the shoulder and stuff like that so yeah. um uh it's only when you get to the real barreling waves actually you start going yeah right that there's there's ne- that's now a wave of consequence um, yeah and yeah <laughs> yeah well, we we're going to spend most of the most of the day here, aren't we? And, yeah. and talking to the other adaptive guys and yep. stuff. And um, again, just absolute congratulations on the Thank place. Thank you. It's yeah, amazing. Just a pleasure that you're all here. It's yeah. great. This is yeah. this place is brilliant. And um, as we said, like how how welcoming like the community's been to it because you, you and the staff that work yeah. here as well mm. they yeah. really know their stuff yep and they're really friendly and even the food here yep so I'm, we're <laughs> vegan yep and um, I just had a vegan cake oh my god it's yeah no really good had, yeah and this is you know we've we, you know at the moment we're because of COVID and stuff we've got a, like a real reduced menu and stuff like that but mm. normally Dan who's the chef here is so yeah so amazing and yep. yeah we're really looking forward to actually the whole sort of um, 
food experience being being something that people would come and visit exactly, in its own yeah. right. Okay, I think um, what's it like two pound for a spectator ticket? Mm-hmm. So you do, the parking's free, yep. so yep. that kind of negates, negates that it, cost. Yeah. And the place is really cool. The cafe is cool, yep. and you get to see some amazing surfers. Yep. really so close. So yeah, one thing, one question: Why is that walk so long? Why is it? <laughs> <laughs> um, so the, the, the reason is actually because uh, this is the perfect place for us to build the actual wave yeah. in terms of uh, from, a, from a geotechnical point of view um, that, you know, there's, there's real challenges in trying to if, if we got, basically if we had it closer to the car park then you're getting really close to the floodplain and it's very very hard to build it ah, right. and the car park was actually already built um, so you know we we we've built this whole space, uh, this whole place in in the green belt, and getting permission for green belt is very very hard, yeah. very very hard, um, uh, which we managed. Um, but the concession that we had to uh, create is that there's a perfectly good car park already there. Mm. So why would you tear up a whole load of green belt to build another car park? That's um, fair which enough. is fair. So we we kind of. So we, we then said, look, I, I think that that's, that's okay for there were a bit, to be a bit of a, a walk from, from there. Yeah, and it's actually, like walking in at Saunton at low tide. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and actually, a lot, what we, what, the thing that, that's really heartened me, one is that people don't really complain, apart from if they're late and they need to get here quite quickly. Um, that was uh, me. Yeah, there we go. Um, but actually, what, whenever I walk backwards and forwards from here, what I notice is that people are talking. So it'd yes. be very easy to just go out of, from here, jump in the car, you're probably straight onto the radio music, or yeah. you're on your phone downloading pictures of all the rest of it. But actually, people are having 15-minute walk, proper conversations, and you can hear them, and they're like yeah. buzzing about what they've seen, or when they're coming in, like very anticipatory of, of, of what's yeah. going on. That actual thing happened to me and my uh, partner when we come here we mm. were running late and there was another couple running late and we ran up with them yep. and then you're like oh my god we're late yeah don't worry don't worry they give you a bit of leeway we're like yeah I know right. yep. so it's like you yep. instantly meet someone as soon as yep. you park the car so yep. yeah so and I think it's become like a bit of a talking point in a good way mm. people are like oh my god it's so long but you can skate there yeah, and people bringing their surf skates and stuff. And yeah, exactly. I, I love that all your staff get round the place on the surf skates. Yeah, so exactly. Cool, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. But cool. yeah, so thanks for your time. I know you're busy Pleasure. today. That's all right. Um, but yeah, we're we're going to stay for the day, and we're going to have a, some food and stuff yeah. and enjoy the place. So, yeah. Amazing. Well yeah. done. Thank you very much. Thank for you. Today. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks for that, Nick. That well, was great dude. to meet him. Yeah. What, yeah. Yeah. What a great Just chat. Just you get a real calm vibe off him. He's really like chilled and relaxed. Yeah. Like if if that was me and having investors and having to worry like that, I'd be a nervous wreck. I yeah. wouldn't, I wouldn't well, be as whole, chilled as him. The whole thing is like driven on emotion and passion. Yeah. And absolutely. And that kind of just shone through when, when we chatted to him. He was genuinely a lovely bloke. And so we know a couple of people at work there, don't we? And, yeah. and they was just saying what an absolutely lovely bloke he is as well. Yeah. They say, like, you know, he's the type of guy who's helping out when, like, you'll see him walk past and he's carrying a load of plates and cups, like, he's clearing up. And he's, you know, he's not like one of those guys that's just in charge shouting at people. He's he's giving lessons. He's in every part of it. The the place is him. Yeah, definitely. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, true true honour. True honour to to meet him. So, uh, yeah, thanks for that, Nick. Yeah. Um, Better give a shout out to Abby as well for... uh, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. To, for setting everything up for us. Yeah, yeah. Lovely yeah. lady. We met her, and uh, she's, yeah. I think uh, she's PR manager. Is that right? Yeah, I communications think so, yeah. manager. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Abby's cool, isn't she? Yeah, and yeah. She yeah. was uh, really uh, she's switched chilled on, well. yeah. clued up, but chilled as well. Yeah, yeah well, I think they make quite a good team together. They look like they did on the day. They were yeah. like organised and everything quite well. And uh, yeah, yeah. It, it went really well the day. Yeah, and yes, yeah, so surfing England's you know what, the, what they've managed to put together. That was the first. UK inland adaptive surfing competition. That's wasn't right. It? Yeah, Wave Wahines were there volunteering as well. It's like the yeah. whole the whole community, the whole surf community, uh, kind of comes together for things like that, and that's what I kind of love about yeah. it. And that that's like makes us proud to be part of it. So we we absolutely had to be there. Yeah, and we had a a great day. Um, yeah. And then we spoke to Martin. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, Martin, who on Instagram is at the One Limb Surfer. What an incredible guy. Yeah, so he had legs and one arm blown off in Afghanistan. Yep, um, and 
so he's in, surfs with one arm and he has a it's like a, a fin type thing flipper yeah, sort like, of I think thing he's like, yeah he's got like a, a prosthetic it's like a paddle yeah, on the other arm paddle that's the word yeah, yeah. yeah that's, that's the one you're looking for yeah yeah but um, he was doing quite well on that day wasn't he and he was when we when we were talking to him he was a bit kind of bummed out because he didn't think he was doing as well as he, he, yeah. as he could but he was actually in second place so he's a bit <laughs> of a perfectionist I think yeah I think definitely yeah um, so yeah, we'll drop that one in now, and uh, here it goes. Hi Martin, how's it going, mate? All right? Uh, yeah, pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. So you've had your first heat today. Yeah. 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 How did you find it? Um, <laughs> yeah, I didn't think it was so good, but then um, yeah, it turned out all right. So, yeah. Um, yeah, few like few mistakes and uh, a bit of a hold down and a bit of a ah uh, moment. But yeah, um, yeah, you were telling yeah. us that hold down the center. So you yeah, kind of got knocked against the wall then. Yeah, only only brushing it like a little bit. It wasn't like banging it or anything. Yeah. But, but the combination with feeling like I was not coming up and running out of air was not not nice. <laughs> no. <laughs> and I've only I've only had that once before. And uh, oh, really, <laughs> yeah, brought back some memories on that one. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, but that that was a bit more of a heavy situation the first time. So, yeah. Um, but. Yeah, no, ended up pulling it out. So yeah, um, all surfers talk about their wipeouts as well. I guess yeah, yeah. so probably more than the surfing yeah. actually. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. So yeah, well, you look good out there today. That's for sure. Yeah, like, thanks. Yeah, yeah, the weather's pretty horrendous today. Um, well, you know, could be worse. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, it could be. Yeah, um, but um, but yeah, no, I don't think it's too bad, and it's kind of good that the wind's offshore here. So it's uh, oh, that's true. Yeah. There's some. I'm hoping it stays for later on on the right. So uh, so you think uh, the winds is affecting the wave here as well yeah, like it does, it does make it yeah. yeah 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 it does the same as the ocean so really yeah yeah, yeah. like normally like uh, normally when i've been up it's either been like kind of no wind or cross or onshore right um but right now seeing the difference with um especially the inside sections of the ways that they are being held open more with the wind yeah and that's so it does make a difference i think so cool so yeah. when are you back in again um, two twenty-five. Oh, so, so you've yeah. got a long, I've got long a little day. bit of time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so where do you normally surf? Where? Yeah, where um, do you normally surf? A uh, beach called Polju down on the Lizard. So. Ah, right. Yeah. yeah so that's, oh, that's where I live. Beautiful so, day. Yeah. Yeah. Lizard. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely stunning. Yeah. Luckily, that's where I grew up as well. So oh I'm, wow. Been there my whole life, basically. Bay is it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Stunning. Cove. Yeah. Absolutely. So they're like next to each other. Yeah. Polju. Yeah. So. Absolutely beautiful beach. Yeah. 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 And luckily, like they Polju. Drive wise is less than a mile from my house. So. Oh wow! Yeah, so <laughs> Lucky to I, be there I go down. It was like I found a way of doing it all myself. So I've got a like four wheel drive electric wheelchair. Yeah, and yeah, just sling a board over my shoulder oh, and a wow. board bag or something. So. <laughs> oh, that's cool. So that that brings yeah. us into you're on Instagram as the one limb surfer. Yeah, that's yeah, right, yeah. How we've 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 talked between us about this, like the thought of like going into the water with one arm is terrifying to me right. how, how do you get over that and how did you like get yeah. to that point we, of we've mentioned um, you a few times on our podcast actually, okay how because right. we try to imagine what that would be like right uh, and we can't kind of fathom the yeah. bravery you, you would need to be able right. to, to okay. do that so well i mean i i guess i don't really feel like is that brave uh, you know but um because obviously I grew up in Cornwall, so I was in the water a lot anyway um, right. as a kid. And I did like cliff jumping and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, and then, but, at, and I was a really, really good swimmer back then as well. Um, but after I got injured, um, in the first, it was, wasn't like, it was two and a half years before I tried surfing. Mm-hmm. Um, but in, the, in those two and a half years, I'd actually tried, like obviously started off swimming in the pool. So I'd learned how to control and how it was to be in there. Yeah. And I, I guess it's because I've got less bones now, but I, <laughs> I float. Basically, I don't really right. have to swim up. Right. I don't have to tread water or anything. Yeah. Um, and then so I learned like, how trying to s- swim with one arm makes a difference. And, and then also I did um, like, adapt to like, water skiing and like, kneeboarding behind a boat as well. Yeah. And then I'd done kayaking as well. Um, before on or even on rapids and stuff as well so I and I'd got a new like and my first trip my I went on a trip to Germany before like like two weeks before I learned to surf yeah and where I was like 
I, I capsized several times at the top of rapids and then end up bouncing down them and all. Oh, and man. So I was like <laughs> kind of used to that anyway. Um, so you're, you're just a water baby then yeah. and that, yeah, there's yeah, nothing yeah. that's going to stop you being no, in the water. No. So oh, I love that. No, and great. then I think then the way I learned as well, um, the event I was on and with the instructors and the way they did all that, it, it made it seem really durable and made it feel comfortable. Yeah. And also, yeah. yeah. So, if, yeah. if you don't mind me ask, uh, asking, what what happened at the um, when you had your accident? Um, well, basically, I was I was in the army and I got uh, blown up by an IED in Afghanistan. So, right, yeah. right. So. Oh, it's just incredible to yeah. to you know yeah. be out doing this and right. like, nothing's going to stop you. Kind of <laughs> no. being that, being the, like the love for water is obviously yeah. what's shining through everything. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, incredible. there's there's ways of doing everything. So it's, absolutely, uh, yeah. There's, uh, not much I haven't managed to adapt in some way and be able to do so yeah yeah and what do you think about this place in itself like what they're doing today and um well um simply I, I actually love it <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean um because I first I was lucky because being on the adaptive team with surfing I got to come for a like pre-opening session and I was like ah yeah okay cool oh nice um, so I was like yeah this is brilliant and then I came back couple times at the start of the year um Mm -hmm. and then yeah i got myself the bundle pack that they were doing back then and yeah since it's reopened i've been must must have had like seven sessions or something since since the lockdown was eased yeah what um Um, what wave setting are you surfing mostly advanced but i've done two advanced plus as well wow how'd you Um, find that that's really good yeah that's that's my favorite really yeah yeah. So, um, but I'm building up though. I'm, go- I'm <laughs> aim- aiming up to expert and higher. Oh, yeah, so. They were they were saying there's lots of other settings as well. Like there's yeah. already but from what we were told before. I think there's like twenty different settings, and maybe they've developed some new ones, right? As well. Um, so you you want to go on the some of the if they I, go like to, I don't know they go bigger than an expert or. Um, not to the public, from what I understand, because <laughs> yeah. there's that. I, I think there's that like beast mode that they call it that right. I remember seeing in all like the yeah, like yeah. pre promo videos that Wave Garden were putting out before anywhere was built. Right. Um, and yeah, I mean that would be the dream to be able to surf waves like that. But I need to build up to that. Right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Nick was saying earlier that the um, some of the some of the pros have ridden that, and they said it's just it's too scary. It's got right. like it's just yeah. it spits you out too much and like yeah. grabs hold of you. And uh, right, yeah, yeah, they said it's a bit, yeah, a bit so scary even for them. There, that's what I yeah I sort of hear that. And like with, same with um, just the regular barrels on expert of guys have been telling me how it's almost like you don't want to do any turns and gain too much speed because otherwise you can't stall enough to be in it. Right. It's almost like you just got to get in the spot and wait for it to barrel over oh, you. Yeah, and just kind of yeah. wait and for go, it. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. But I haven't found that out for myself yet. So right. I think I've maybe had my back shoulder kind of barreled on the inside, nice. but um, I haven't actually been barreled yet. So right. yeah. that's like my number one goal, that's really. That's, that's, that's this think, afternoon. Yeah, that's going to be your winning score this afternoon. Yeah, hopefully, yeah. <laughs> So, what well, um, what board are you surfing then? Is it would it right. be different lengths as well? Do you surf different length boards? Um, or? Yeah, I've had various boards throughout the time. Obviously, the, the first event I was on was like uh, when I learned I was it's like between a nine and ten foot foamy, the like, big yep. old thing, um, and then gradually worked down. I had a couple of years of riding a seven foot storm blade um, foam board as well yeah which is really good i mean that and that width is, i need because i need extra width for stability plus because i sit down as well okay I, I i can't sort of ride regular dimensions because otherwise my legs would just be dragging in the water right yeah. um so I, most of my boards are like around 25 wide um, right. but i've got various lengths of boards at home but the one i usually surf now is a 6.4 Yep. It's like 25 and a quarter wide and then three and an eighth thick. Yeah. So, so do you go mm. out a lot down at Lizard? Yeah. Yeah, cause yeah like, whenever it's good. Yeah. It's a lot well, quieter. As much as possible, really. But it's, yeah. Uh, yeah. it's a lot quieter down there, isn't it? Like the surf, it seems to be. Because I've walked part of the coast path down there last year. Yeah. And um, it seems quite clean as well, like the, it, the waves. Well, as long as the winds are coming from the east, it's clean. <laughs> yeah, well, it must have been on the day I was yeah, walking. Yeah. And so, there's um, only a couple of people out as well. It looked yeah, really nice. that's it. I mean, I think maybe we don't want to publicise it too much because <laughs> most people go like Nuki or wherever, you know. But yeah, that, And I think 
there's a few reasons why I don't. Obviously, mm. I'm so close to that spot, yeah. which faces the same way anyway. Yeah. Um, and then I can do that myself, and I don't really have any help to go other places. So, yeah. um, although now I'm like just about to free myself up on that front. So, because yeah. right. I'm, I'm, I've found a van that's got a wheelchair lift in the back. So, oh, cool. Oh, so cool. I can then take that power chair other places because it's uh, too yeah. big and heavy to put into a car. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I was going to say, I saw your face change a bit when he mentioned one of those spots earlier. And uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll cut right. that one out. That's <laughs> uh, all right, yeah. It's, um, I mean, when it, you do, it does get crowded there. I mean, there is plenty of people that know about it, and especially during the summer, it's it's quite a really popular beach then because there's so there's loads of campsites nearby. Oh uh, right, yeah. and also yeah, and then also it's just been put on Magic Seaweed a couple of months ago. Uh, yeah. Well, that's, that's, that's it. As that's soon as like, on Magic yeah. Seaweed, then we we yeah, say it's fine. So, so. We, uh, but the annoying thing about that is, is like they obviously don't haven't researched it or anything because right. like. Then they haven't bothered to put the correct tide information because they put Paul Flevin's tide info. Oh, I see. And basically put the same forecast as Paul Flevin on there. Yeah. And it's like, it's not even the same kind of break. It's yeah. Like, we yeah. kind of noticed like, that on, yeah. like, yeah, the beaches that run up and down the coast. Yeah. They what all look the same and we yeah. know full well that yeah. they're, they're not because there's a headland in the way or something yeah. like that. Yeah. I think they're, they're pretty lazy on that sort of stuff. And yeah. It's, Kind of I don't, I don't to pay like too much attention to it, but I found like um, I found a good balance with obviously over time learning the difference of what's shown on the forecast or what's actually going to be going on. Yeah, yeah. So I think that's where where we're starting. To, you've got to look at a lot of different different yeah. data to sort of build up. Well, the whole and that's picture. also that's where local knowledge comes in, doesn't it? Yeah. So you obviously know from living down there your whole life, you know what sets that off. Yeah. So if yeah, you can yeah. get like the swell direction and the wind speed yeah. then that, you're that's fine that's basically look at I don't really yeah. pay attention to what they say your size is going to be yeah because everybody looks at the stuff. stars on there don't they like yeah. We, yeah. how many times have we fallen prey to oh no <laughs> stars not going and then you see on Instagram like, oh, yeah. damn you know yeah and there's so many times as well where I might have looked at the forest for like even the last few weeks I thought oh there's not going to be anything yeah, yeah. then <laughs> I look at a camera and it's like, <laughs> or go past with a dog and it's like Oh, okay. <laughs> Cop, yeah. Pop home quickly and grab, jump my stuff on, and then go down there, and it's been really good. Yeah, so. I think that's the thing that we we can't do. Is that we're, we're, we're from the wave, we're about half an hour away, but from oh, okay. our what right. we would call our local break would be Saunton, and we're an hour and a half. So oh, okay, right, it's yeah. Kind of irritating yeah. that we can't just shoot and down. That, like that. That's where I'm lucky being so close. But even so, like even sometimes I'll look at it and it'll look pretty good and go for it straight away but yep. because of the amount of tide shift and the way the banks are it's yeah. like it might have gone by the time I get down there that's the problem and with it only takes me well can take me between 20 and 30 minutes to get out of the house right and then it's on my chair it's like 15 to 20 minutes well if I go straight down the road mm -hmm. take me about just under 10 minutes to get there but usually I take this back track rather than go down the road just because yeah, yeah. of safety yeah, yeah. Um, and then it takes 15 minutes or so to get down there but nice. yeah by the time I get down there it could be gone yeah so, so you, like, you, you could be from your house into surfing like 40 minutes yeah. or so yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah. nice but usually I'm like because I'm lucky where I don't have to work and so surfing is basically all I focus on doing <sighs> what so like, the sounds of the yeah, so I'm like <laughs> I'm either training or surfing or yeah. you know, whatever so I'm like I'm usually like I know if there's something coming, so I'm yeah. usually on it, like knowing with the tide times of what time I got to be ready yeah. for. So you can really study it then, don't yeah. you? Yeah. yeah. So like you were saying earlier, like you, you're obviously paying off all the surfing because you're yeah. saying, oh, I, I thought I was going to get a free on that wave and you actually end up getting a five, was <laughs> it a think, five or six? Uh, or? I think they, someone said to me it was like a 5.6 or something. Yeah. Uh, so even when you think you're doing rubbish, you're yeah. actually doing pretty good. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. I, I think it might have just been because, well, I got... I think there was it's kind of two top turns of like a little cutback yeah and then positioned on two sections because it looked like it was going to barrel a little bit right so like I was trying to stick myself there just in case it did and so maybe from the period it looked like I did right I, I, I always see I, I don't know yeah but, um, to me it didn't feel like that good of a score but right. But yeah, obviously. But you're going to take it, was, it anyway. Yeah. That's yeah. <laughs> yeah. yes, all you can do is take what they give you. So. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. But, but I know the right's my better side. So. And uh, so, how, what position did you come after your heat then? 
Uh, second, I was told. So. Right. And yeah. so and that's on the side you're not comfortable with yeah. as well. So. Yeah. so do you think you're going to win? <laughs> no. Really? No, yeah. No, because no, um, Sponge, the guy who's leading, is like really good. Yeah. I, I know his level. Like, I know I'm not, I'm not at that level yet. But you never know. I mean, I might do like some of the stuff that I've done here on some sessions where they might think it's really yeah. good you know and, well, we were and I don't know what his scores were either so I, I don't know what I think his gap he's probably in eights or something at well, least. it's probably best not to know I imagine yeah I you just, just, doesn't, just do your it thing. doesn't really matter because all I can do is do what I can do so yeah and yeah. we were saying like how it's quite frustrating with surfing how you can have same conditions and yeah. you can have a really good surf or really bad surf and, yeah. and, and it's, it, yeah. there's nothing you don't really know why you know it's no, like, yeah it's almost That's like it. if you get that n- uh, kind of frustrated yeah. feeling in your head, you can't right. surf all of a sudden. I, yeah. I know for myself the, why I wasn't feeling so good this morning. Right. Um, it all stems from yesterday. So um, it was it training day yesterday? Was it? <laughs> it was supposed to be. Right. <laughs> but like, what's supposed to be like a normal three and a half hour drive to get here ended up being five. So oh, I actually yeah. missed the session that I was supposed to be booked oh, on. Oh, few so, Because people don't know how to drive in the rain. And it was like, <laughs> people don't know how to drive full stop well, in this yeah, country. It's terrible. The M5 it, is a bit of a nightmare for well, well. It all started from like half an hour before Exeter, right. where there was one car, um, I think it was broken down probably. But yeah, it was like half hour tailback, so it was like nose to tail moving yeah. through. Then try to make up time, and then from 20 minutes after Exeter, it was like nose to tail. Yeah. So, it's and it was, but it was really strange because the navigation was saying there was two accidents on the M5. Yeah, but I never saw one. No, no. And it was like you'd be nose to tail crawling for like 20 minutes. Yeah. Then get up to 60 for like two miles, and then stop again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. all so the way up here. So I was like, oh, yeah. So. Well, we went to Exeter the other day, didn't yeah. we? Well, we were supposed to go to Saunton, but we ended up at Exeter because we just missed the junction and <laughs> just chatting. Yeah. Right. The, amount of time, the amount of times we've gone to Saunton and we just missed the junction, not by one junction, by two junctions for some reason. I have no idea oh, what that's oh, terrible. Yeah. I don't know. Um, yeah, I mean, so that ended up frustrating me. And then yeah. last night was not a good night sleep or anything. So oh, right. Yeah, I wasn't in a good mood this morning anyway, so I think <laughs> I was just... And it then does I was like, it, Then it? I was like, oh, oh, it's on the left first. I know I'm not that good at going left. Uh, so. yeah. It's like, yeah. Well, at least you come second on yeah. on like your kind of weaker side. Yeah, so that's yeah. great. Exactly, and also, yeah. like the location of this place is kind of perfect. It's like right off the yeah. motorway, isn't yeah. it? So exactly, that yeah. helps. There's no like yeah. difficult and annoying detours or anything no. like that. Just straight off the motorway and you're here. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. Do you have um, Do you find a massive difference between surfing this and surfing in the ocean? Do you think it's Do you think like um, no, not, not really. See, I, I personally, it's I thought it, I find it very different, and I couldn't get my right. head round for ages that it's not the ocean. Yeah, and it took me a long time to sort of get my head round that, right. and then be like, right, yeah, okay. I mean, I mean, in the sense of like not having to worry about lineup so much and um, being in the right spot because that's all taken care of, and I, I personally feel like the actual catching of it is pretty similar and then once you once i'm on it it feels just the same yeah. but i mean yeah it is different because you're like by a wall and like in this lake and, and, and the current like, works a bit differently yeah well the channel that yeah. takes you out is really good isn't it it yeah. worked out really well yeah because like, yeah. it's it's really so, simple yeah. to get out which takes like that yeah. kind of you've got more energy to surf haven't you yeah. when you're up there so. yeah that's it i um because i often sometimes at home get I, I spent like 40 minutes trying to get through your shore break just yeah. just yeah. to get out back mm. um and then but here obviously you got a wide open channel yeah current going out but i actually find like i still have to paddle out mm-hmm. because the next wave coming is still pushes me back oh so, so yeah, like right, i still yeah. yeah but it's not like it is if i'm getting hit by white water you know no, no, it's definitely. quite easy for me to get bumped off and mm. um even with the handles I got on the board and um, I'm starting to get the hang of duck diving a bit more as well and cool. it's even so it's still a struggle yeah um, that's why like, I've, I've never well I get quite frustrated when we go to like the world championships right because of the beach that they have it on there's like no channel and like it's the way it breaks and I sh- struggle getting out there's loads of yeah. side shore rip because it's a wide open beach and right it, 
it's, it gets frustrating. It's yeah, like, yeah, we mm. still doing it though. You yeah. know, just the yeah. perseverance is just yeah. incredible. So yeah, yeah. That's, it. that's all. That's all I can do is just keep going. I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we were speaking to uh, Sasha the other day, and he right. said you're going to be doing something with him soon. Is that right? Um. Yeah, I mean, we're talking about going and surfing a few spots like around Devon Way and. He showed me a video one recently. I was like, oh, that's like, that's like my ideal spot. <laughs> a secret uh, spot, was it? Well, not not really, but, you know, I, I think it's more of a local one. So I just, yeah. uh, I'll leave it off. Yeah. Well, here, he's definitely a guy yeah. to be connected yeah. to, isn't he? He really <laughs> yeah. knows his stuff. And it so. was just, that was a random meeting here as well. So yeah. Yeah. he just came and asked me about my board one day. And yeah, just, lovely uh, bloke. Yeah, we had a really, yeah, really, really good, good chat yeah. to him, didn't we? Yeah, really yeah nice, he yeah. helped me out a few weeks ago with doing some filming for me like and that. So. Nice. Um, that might have been the it might have been the day before. I think we chatted to him the day before. Actually, yeah. he did mention that he was coming. To he was coming to oh, okay. early in the morning yeah. the next morning. I think it yeah. was. Yeah, because yeah. 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 so. you know he's, he's hardly ever here, is he? You know. So. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's like here less than I am. <laughs> 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 um, yeah. Well, but, we're, we'll let you prepare for your your uh, next heat yeah. and stuff. So, That's right, really yeah. appreciate you coming and uh, yeah. having a chat to us. Yeah, and stuff yeah so yeah. Um, if people want to find you on Instagram, it is. Yeah, it's um, uh, One Limb Surfer. So, with okay. the number one. Not All right. Much, yeah. Um, yeah. And well, then um, I think as well, I need to get people to check out Operation Surf as well. Because that's like the group I, I um, learnt with and I'm an ambassador for. So. Yeah. Okay. Um, is that, um, a, is that a website address? Or? Well, and Instagram as well. And Instagram. Uh, yeah, same. And that's what Operation that Surf. Operation Surf, yeah. Operation Surf, right. And there's actually a film on Netflix about it all called Resurface. So oh, I've got I've seen, seen, seen that, seen that yeah. actually. Yeah, so, well, we're, yeah. we're tagged on that. as well. So. Are you? Amazing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, brilliant. Yeah, well, I'll yeah. definitely um, we'll yeah, tag it's up. Yeah, it's that, because that has a lot of, I feel it's quite good to show some of the benefits of surfing in the ocean and just Absolutely. like from a therapy side of things so yeah, yeah. Uh, we often we often say that like that feeling we often ask people what's the feeling you get from surfing and most people their answer is that that same just ah oh, it's just yeah it's yeah. just blissful it's just right yeah and the way the wave, the wave of are really better. are really into yeah. all that now, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, totally. we're, we're chatting to a few people there, and they've got loads of um, yeah. loads of people they're working with now, which is really yeah. good for the surf community. Yeah, in general, and there's, so. there's actually, there has actually been, I think, nearly thirty studies on surf therapy of the actual benefits for it, and yeah. there is a lot of data for how it helps. Yeah, you know, so well, and it so. seems to have taken over your whole life. You're like yeah. a yeah, yeah. fully I, fledged I mean, surf bum now. <laughs> it is like that, and I do get up but i can still like if i don't get some good rides and i can still come out of the water in a bad mood <laughs> i think that's maybe me I, I i often feel a bit sometimes feel odd can, when other people talk about just going and getting wet because for me it's not really like that it's like i, know I need good rides to yeah. <laughs> like feel good i can still get real you have um, too much self expectation yeah exactly yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah no i know that feeling um, you fr- yeah, frustrate and I'm yourself always, always trying to improve like as well yeah. So, yeah and if i don't feel like i've done something at least up to what i can do then i i'm like ah, i suppose yeah. too hard on myself really mm. so. i suppose as well you've got that thing of where people say it's about just going and getting wet yeah. there's a lot more effort involved for you than just yeah. just strolling down to the beach and getting yeah. wet you know you've uh, like you said you've got to take that chair and you've got yeah. you know 40 minutes just to, least, just yeah, to yeah. get in there i wonder yeah. if that's your like your military mindset as well could be yeah. driving you like you need to progress and improve well, and i think i've always been like that anyway right it's not just from that because there's a lot of like veterans that i'm around that are always saying about i'll oh, just go get wet but <laughs> i'm like uh i don't get it <laughs> like, so, i think it's maybe i've like seen some potential and i'm trying to get somewhere it's yeah. not like i'm just going out to enjoy it um, yeah yeah what's the uh what's your favorite place you've ever surfed um that you can say <laughs> oh yeah i just it's just a, it's a bit of a because there's a few places um and they're not actually in the uk so it's like they're not um there's um well if they're not I in the really uk like, you can just say yeah you know. so i really enjoy <laughs> Because of the time I spent in the States, I, I really enjoy surfing the north side of Huntington Pier. Right, That's yeah. a pretty local spot, but I yeah, know a bunch of people, so I've been able to get out there, and it's pretty good. Yeah, um, it's quite consistent as well, apparently, yeah. isn't it? And yeah. then um, Steamer Lane in Santa Cruz is probably 
up there. Those two are pretty even, but I think the top is probably Hanley Bay on Kauai. Right, on nice. Kauai, that's that wow. was, uh, went there after I'd been surfing like just over two years. Yeah, yeah, and that was um, so they're the places and mega spot. That <laughs> was like, and actually, that's probably where I've had my biggest waves as well because the last day that we surfed, it was like twelve foot. Oh, is that some of the photos like, on Instagram? Is there photos of you there on Instagram? Um, I think there's a few, but they would have been early on on my account. Right. But my profile picture on there is actually north side of Huntington. Yeah, because there yeah. was some was some bloody big waves on there, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. 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 yeah well, I'd say that that last day there was yeah it was double overhead. So wow. So, um, yeah. And actually had like. 10 waves and like no wipeouts and oh amazing oh. Like, just perfect <laughs> barrels then no no barrels but just long long point break oh nice yeah so well a reef but a point right you know, kind of yeah. thing yeah. so long reef yeah um, but then <laughs> that's just <laughs> that actually is what I was saying about my previous like hold down experience my yep. first one that came like a few months later um, in this more of a secret spot in central california like right where it um went out on a solid south swell and it was like 10 foot and i gone in full confidence after being in hawaii and like i was like yeah this is gonna be great it's no yeah. no problem like and um first wave i went on um turns out well guys told me afterwards that i'd sat up too far left on the board because it's the right point right I tried to do bottom turn yeah. well turn midway on the way to start going down the line and um yeah it's like the board just stopped <laughs> and i went like head first down and, <laughs> and those weren't too bad but it, like the third wave so i went to like dive under on the set i missed time my dive and just got pummeled oh, and, right. like held down the board was tombstone in and right. i only just made it back up oh and, terrifying uh, and then had like another five ways in the set to deal with so sounds was, like you're describing my normal surfing days <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, so we that, constantly fall off the front yeah, and face yeah. plant in the board yeah. <laughs> that, that's one that actually took me a while to get over oh, like, right because at that point yeah i was pushing on you know getting on all these like bigger waves yeah. and then i was like i didn't even want to going head high for like a year and a half jeez that's it yeah. shook me a bit so. yeah 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 well, I can but I now i'm like let's go <laughs> yeah. take me back there yeah yeah, yeah. So, but nice. yeah all <laughs> start, right start rambling on and but yeah I well get like that with surfing so i get that, that. I yeah we're the, do, same. So. we're the Honestly, same we're the same so that's why we started a podcast because we just <laughs> right. we were fed up of talking just to each other about it so right, we, we okay. talked to other people about it yeah, yeah we annoy other yeah. people with it instead <laughs> <laughs> cool, what man. about uk wise then so where's where do you get your favorite place to surf in the uk if you uh, um well yeah it's got to be home yeah, OG, yeah. most most surfers say that they're local break don't they yeah, yeah. Chat to, that seems to be see, i think it's just because yeah. you get to know it and you know what it does and you know how it works although it hasn't been where I really like it for a couple of years. Yeah. It was like two, three years ago, the storm destroyed the sandbanks and they just haven't come oh, back. Oh, right. Because at that point, all the sand was piled up on one side of the cove. So it yep. was just like this mega right hand point. Yeah. Uh, it just went. You mean you get like over yeah. a twenty second ride probably? Wow. I think I think I saw some pictures of that on the on Instagram. Like no one yeah. was saying where it was at the time, but yeah, you could yeah, just see it. Was it was insane. Yeah. 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 Nothing would break on the left hand side. It was nice paddle out. Yeah. yeah, and just like perfect, and then this storm destroyed it, and oh, it hasn't come back yet. So oh, it's a shame. So yeah. at the moment, there's this um, sandbar way out at the entrance to the cove. That it's like so you've got like a good bank at like low tide, mm. but then it, nothing really gets in for the middle. But then it's all yeah, it's really weird. So you got paddle it's, to get right out there then, and yeah, but there's no point unless it's massive. There's no point going out there. Yeah. Unless yeah. it's low tide, so we we managed. It's like to you've got three our... three different waves depending on the point of tide, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, of so course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we managed to serve our first kind of sandbank surf uh, in the summer, didn't we? And yeah. it's the first time we'd done that, and that was yeah. just incredible. Right, okay. But like you said, you have got like a finite time, haven't you? Yeah. Before it, that's yeah, that's it. Then. Yeah, and that, we... that's something that the, the guys from the states when they've come over had talked about. Um, oh, really? Because we did a couple of those op surf events here, and they like amazed by the tide shift because over there you, they've only got like yeah it's I very think small it's only isn't like it? six yeah. to eight foot tide swing whereas here it's like 30 yeah yeah and they're like unreal like, something yeah. else you've got to deal yeah. with as a surfer you've got to know yeah, that yeah. as well yeah. yeah 
Yeah. So, I love that. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, well, nice. So, yeah. We really appreciate your time yeah. today, Martin. So, right. yeah, um, thanks. Yeah. That is, uh, yeah, we really appreciate you coming cool. and chat to us. So yeah, good no luck worries, for the rest man. of the day. Yeah, I'm sure you do well. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> thanks. But, appreciate it. And thanks for that, Martin. That was awesome to meet him. Yeah, what a nice guy. And, uh, you know, we stopped recording and then he, uh, we carried on chatting for about another 20 minutes, didn't we? Well, afterwards? yeah, the, the love of surfing just flows out of him and he's, he's like, uh, he just lives and breathes surfing. Yeah. Which is just awesome. First time I've had to use the beat machine as well today for uh, your little... Uh, Oh yeah, well, yeah. He said it's not really a secret spot, but it's not magic seaweed. So that the yeah. rule on the show is, if it's not magic magic seaweed, we won't mention it. So yeah, I hope that's a kind of that's a fair rule. I think that's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well done for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just make more work for me. Brilliant. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, as we say, it's a fantastic day, and you know we had a really good time and. Just thank you to everybody. Like, like you know, thank yeah. you to the wave. Thank you to Surfing England. Yeah, everybody involved. At the event. Everyone. Wave, wave Wahines, you know, yeah. everybody. It just that all came together to make that possible. Uh, just looked like it made Nick incredibly happy, and um, you know, just oh, the whole the whole vibe around the day. There was not one unhappy face there. I don't think. Yeah. Surfing Devon was there as well. Missed him again. Yeah, it's quite elusive, <laughs> isn't he? Yeah, he is coming on at some point, but um, it, tracking him down is like, uh, well, yeah, it's like trying to find. Oh, it's not Quasimodo. What's it called? Oh, I don't even know where I'm going. Yeah, no, but what's the other Sasquatch? That's what <laughs> I was right. trying to think of. Quasimodo, <laughs> Meralda. <laughs> anyway, I uh, sidetracked. Yes, so, as yeah. always. As always, um, don't forget to go over to Northcore and, you know, you can get your 15% discount uh, surf show 15 and that is northcore-europe.com. Yeah, you struggle with that bit. I struggle with a lot of things. <laughs> Normally, yeah. I struggle with, hello, and welcome to the UK surf show. And then your name. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, that bit. <laughs> Amazing. Well, guys, yeah, it's a bonus episode, so uh, we hope you enjoyed today's show. Yeah, we uh, we had a great time, didn't we? Yeah. Uh, so this is yeah bonus one, and we've got your uh, your bonus fifteen percent off as well. So that's going to bonus is all round for, for the foreseeable. So that code is valid till the end of the year. Cool. Just what? in time for Christmas. Oh, just in time for Christmas. So, thanks for listening. Happy bonus episode. Well done again to everyone involved at the adaptive surfing competition. And thanks to Nick and Martin for taking the time to speak to our strange-looking faces. See you later. Cheers. <laughs>